my classical guitar fingernails are back. You can see they're quite big right now after five years of playing classical guitar without my nails. And I made a big deal about playing without my nails. It was a big transition for me. I made a YouTube series about it, talking about learning the new techniques and my advice and my thoughts and my reflections all about it. I practiced it a ton to try to relearn everything I knew with this new technique. I interviewed Rob McKillop. He's one of the leading voices on this topic of playing classical guitar without nails. I ordered gut strings from overseas because gut strings are supposed to be better for getting a smoother sound for playing with your fingertips. I even bought a new guitar to try to get the sound that I was looking for. Turns out I was wrong. I was not wrong about playing classical guitar without nails. Actually, I loved that experience. The whole thing was amazingly beneficial doing that. I love the sound of it. Uh, I stand behind everything that I said in my YouTube series about playing classical guitar without nails, which you can find easily by just searching on YouTube. Classical guitar without nails, one of those videos will come up. You can link to the whole series from there. I was wrong about something much bigger. I was wrong about what I was searching for. In this video, I wanna share my findings and reflections from five years of playing classical guitar without my fingernails and why I have grown them out once again and I am now playing with my fingernails again. I'll share a pros and cons list of both approaches and I will share my number one huge big realization takeaway that I got from the whole experience which has now shifted how I'm thinking of creativity and music in general all around. Let's get into it. I'm Jared Borkowski from SoundGuitarLessons.com, where I have courses that help guitarists express themselves more freely and confidently through improvisation, arranging, fretboard theory mastery, and much more. If you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe and please follow. I have new lessons and new episodes like this on a regular basis. Here's what we're going to cover. I'll talk a little bit about why I switched to no fingernails, though that's also in my series about no nails. I'll share the pros of playing without nails, the cons of playing about without nails, what I didn't like about it. Um, I'll share this big concept uh, realization of what I was wrong about, what I was searching for, and how this is affecting my overall musicianship right now. Uh, I'll talk about the benefits of having done this, this five-year stint of playing without nails. And then at the end, I want to share just some reflection thoughts about uh, kind of my focus on YouTube here and how this is a little bit related, and just overall the idea of, of people with conviction about something changing their minds which I love. It's going to be cool to kind of chat about that for a little bit at the end. If you are interested in playing solo guitar, which means playing guitar by itself, but it's a complete sound, not taking a solo on the guitar, but solo guitar, as in classical guitar, like the little clip I played at the beginning, or um, anything that just the guitar by itself is the complete sound, um, I have a free solo guitar arrangement pack with a bunch of music with the sheet music and the tabs, and I'll send you links to demonstrations of all the pieces of music and lessons about them and everything that is totally free you can get it with the link in the top of the description or go to soundguitarlessons.com slash moon to get my free solo guitar arrangement pack there's some really difficult pieces of music in there there's also some very easy and approachable pieces and a lot of stuff in between and a variety classical music chord melody and other stuff as well so get that if you are interested uh, let's dive into the main stuff here so I share a lot about this in my series. So go check that out if you want more about kind of my background and why I switched to nails. But quickly, my background is in songwriting first and foremost early on, and then jazz guitar and then classical guitar. And since uh, I've had all three, since I added in all three of those things, it's just always my interest has always been in all three of those things. I just love them for their own art form and I love the way they interact and influence each other. And for me, progress in each one has been really slow. Um, slow and steady because I don't just dive into only one, but I'll go through phases of kind of focusing and really, you know, really making progress and then switching around. Um, it's kind of cool because then I can share about all kinds of different things on my YouTube channel. But my background in this variety here, a uh, big reason for me wanting to try playing without my nails is that I wanted to get a finger style sound on the Telecaster. That's kind of like a Ted Green uh, sound that I, I just absolutely love. I love, love, love that fingertip sound on the Telecaster uh, for like jazz arrangements. Um, so I really wanted that. And so, okay, I'd have to chop off my nails for it. And I was chopping off my nails and then and then um, using finger picks, which I'll talk about in a second for classical guitar. And I just wanted to try, can I just play without my nails? And I looked into it more and saw more and more people are doing this um, and got excited about it and just went all in 
for five years on that. So that's a little bit why I switched to my fingernails. Also, my nails were just always thin and just didn't sound great. If I was getting like the most amazing sound on my with my nails that I know I know is possible from hearing other people play, I maybe would have uh, valued them more, but they were thin. They were always broke really easily. And I just was having trouble with keeping them consistent. Um, and again, I'll talk about some finger picks that I use soon, but so I chopped off my nails five years ago, said, I'm going to commit to this, uh, not just a little bit, but really hardcore. I'm going to relearn everything. I'm going to study this technique. I'm going to practice all my pieces this way. I'm going to figure out everything. Everything was so different. Here's what I think are the pros of playing without nails. Here's what I liked about it. I really like the tone. It gets like a lute like sound if you do it right. And my first uh, love of classical music was a lute album that I had. And I would just listen to these Bach lute suites over and over again. And the sound was so warm and so round. And then when I got into playing classical guitar and working on these exact Bach lute suites, the guitar arrangements of them, um, it was this kind of much brighter sound, right? It was that nail sound on the classical guitar. So when I started playing with the tips of my fingers and chopped the nails off, it instantly brought me back to that feeling of those 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 warm lute sounds that I really enjoyed. So that's something that I think is was a big pro about it. Uh, obviously, a pro of playing without your nails is just no nail issues, right? The nail, if you get it right, it's amazing. But on one day, you know, it might be shorter, it might be longer, it might chip a little bit, the angle might not be right. You spend all this time um, filing your nails and smoothing them out using nail paper, using nail files. Um, so the inconsistency or issues or whatever they are, I mean, I just moved recently. I'm in a new space. If you're watching on YouTube, see my, my background, I'm in a, a new room. And, you know, I'm trying to move stuff, move boxes and stuff. And then like a nail gets bent backwards or something is really painful and, or just chips off completely. Though side note, I've been kind of moisturizing them now and that makes them very flexible, which has prevented them from breaking so far. But for a lot of people, nail issues are just that they're getting in the way of other things you want to do. Other things that you want to do in life that, um, that the nails are extremely inconvenient for even just like yard work or something like that. So no nail issues is a huge pro of playing without nails. Uh, for me, I like to play on piano. So where any musician might have a keyboard around or piano or want to dabble in recording stuff. And um, I, I found that to be a big pro for me that I could play piano without the nails being there. I can play piano with the nails. Um, and I'm not a piano player. I don't share it on my YouTube channel or anything like that, but I like to play around with it. Um, compose with it or think about theory on the piano or something like that. Um, so I can play, I just have to flatten my fingers out and not play like with better technique on the piano. So that was a big pro for me uh, of playing without my nails. And I already said it, but the fingertip sound on my telly was like the biggest pro of all in terms of playing without my nails. I just was able to get that sound that I wanted. And then just more convenient for like everyday life stuff. The cons of playing without nails, which are important to acknowledge and not, I think when I was midway through this journey of playing without my nails, I was, um, I was kind of in denial of, of the cons. I was just thinking, no, it can be fine. I just need to keep working on it harder, but it's good to acknowledge the reality that the timbre range, the, the range of, um, like texture, like specifically timbre, the, the frequency range that you can get is just more limited straight up. There's no, there's no way to get that really bright Ponticello sound playing down by the bridge, the same brightness as with nails simply can't, you simply can't. It's just like similar. If you're playing with the fingertip, with your fingertips, you can't get the same sound as strumming with a pick. They're just different things. They're supposed to be different things. That's the point. So the timbre range is definitely limited. You have this very warm, beautiful sound, but just this one kind of area of, of range. Similarly, the volume. Uh, I think I have more of an issue with the volume, honestly, because guitar is such a quiet instrument. Um, and I love playing it quietly. It's very nice, but just, I could not project as much without my nails. For the most part, I'm pretty okay with that. And I love the sound so much. I love it as this kind of close up whisper kind of sound. So I think it's, uh, I think it's supposed to be that, but if I want it to dig in and get more of a dynamic range, it just has more of a limited dynamic range. And related to that is in general, the physical effort. And this is something I was very much trying to kind of power through, kind of trying to work my way through and practice more to get it down the physical effort it takes to play without the nails at all 
but especially to get any sort of volume is just substantially more. I have to dig in and um, push in on the strings and just use a lot more effort with the hand. Whereas playing with the nails, um, there's this almost effortless kind of just move the finger and you get that pluck sound, but you get the bright nail pluck sound. So I'm not saying it's bad. The effort feels good in a lot of ways playing without the nails, um, but you just have to dig in kind of constantly. So it's a little more fatiguing um, playing without the nails for a long time. Okay, so here's this thing that I'm saying that I was wrong about and what I was searching for. What I was searching for and what I've been searching for for a long time, and I hear other people talking about this too, is kind of this unified sound or unified technique, this one solution to playing guitar. I could play every guitar this way or any time or this uh, with this one technique that gets all the sounds or all the genres or everything that I want. If I really took the time to think about that desire, I would easily see clearly that it's unreasonable and actually inconvenient and not as fun and all these things. But I had this idea that, and, and I hear a lot of musicians, kind of more serious musicians who want to optimize, talk about similar stuff. Ah, I just want to have the one guitar that I play that gets the tone, all the tones that I want instead of having to switch guitars. Or I just want, um, I just heard Joe Robinson, who's a colleague of mine. I'm doing a collaboration with him um, coming up soon where we talk about recording acoustic guitar because he's a master at that. Um, so stay tuned on my channel for that. But uh, I heard him talking about this where he said, I just, I wish there could be uh, one guitar that gets all the sounds I want, but I have to keep changing guitars and just, I haven't found it yet, but maybe someday I heard him make a comment like that. Uh, but I've heard a lot of people talk about, oh, is there just one pick that I can use that gets all the sounds that I want? So as we learn more, styles and we get interested in more things and we we uh get a different type of guitar and we go down this path and this path and this path um a lot of these have very different techniques very different sounds and that's why we find them appealing and we're adding to our versatility and our diversity of knowledge um but for some reason i guess many of us have this tendency to think we can bring it back all together and that we can just have this one thing i can play all the songs all the I can play all the classical pieces and all the jazz tunes and all my songs on this one guitar with this one technique. And I just, it's just kind of flowing through me. So I have been hanging on to that idea for a long, long time. And in every little realm of technique as well, I, I definitely had this phase of switching through when I was working on jazz really heavily a long time ago, switching through playing with different types of picks and trying them all out and liking this one and liking that one. And I was playing a lot of gigs and stuff too. And when you play gigs, you, you need the versatility, right? You need the variety. Oh, this, we got to do this song at the, at the wedding where there's this like funky, bright sound. And we got to do this other thing where there's this darker sound or, you know, so increasingly over time, uh, the, different sounds, techniques that I was wanting to reach for in general, overall for different situations was just growing bigger and bigger. And I think this happens to a lot of people. Um, and I, so I fell into this trap on the classical guitar where I was thinking, um, maybe I can play everything on the classical guitar without nails so that I can do all these other things. And then I can just be, um, this, one kind of singular technique musician, even if I'm switching guitar types, right? This mix and match, you know, any of these things. So that's what was the problem. The realization is that every sound, every technique, every um, ambition that we're going towards artistically, realistically is actually always going to be project by project. It's going to be moment by moment. It's going to be the inspiration in the moment. And what kind of hit me was that even if and when people find this one solution to something like, oh, it's working, you're kind of making compromises across the board. If you're going to do everything in one way, well, then you do none of it, maybe in the way that you really want it to. But moreover, everything is always shifting. 
So even if I found this perfect technique, something else would inspire me or the project calls for something else or something else. Um, and so my realization was with the nails, I mean, the best way to put it is that it's a renewable resource. I had a few times of chopping them off and then growing them back. They grew back accidentally a couple times because I was using the finger picks that I use. And I'll show you, show you these here. These are called Alaska picks. I have like a big bowl of them here. And I was using these um, for many years in between, you know, trying other things. So this was a similar kind of thing. Oh, can I put, take this on, you know, put this on, take it off. I actually got a really good sound on this. If you search on YouTube for classical guitar finger picks, you will find my video about that. I do kind of a review of them and demonstrate all the sounds I can get out of them on different guitars and stuff like that. And I got quite good at using those and I still will use them sometimes. Um, but uh, my taste kind of became refined over time and I can hear now even the best possible sound with these finger picks, which I would say the sound I was getting with the finger picks were better than any nail sound I ever got. But I can hear now the plastic sound of it, even with the best technique, even if it's not clicking or anything like that. I just kind of hear that oh, it's not quite the same as the natural sound um, with the nails. So the nails being a renewable resource and me, as I talked about this, and I'm, I only am speaking from my own experience. Because I'm someone that, that's why I started it off saying my background is these three different things. So I can rotate between them happily, right? I can just work on, I can take a break from something and go into really deep in jazz, come back to classical later, whatever. So the fingernails being this renewable resource, I just, I had gone a few cycles of chopping them off and then they grew back, chopping them off and then they grew back. And yeah, they take some time to grow back, but not that long, like a few weeks, um, I'd say yeah, three weeks or so, which, yeah, that sounds like a long time if you look at it one way, but it's really not if you look at it another way. And I was just like, what am I, what am I trying to compromise for? My nails grew back kind of accidentally. I played with them a little bit and I loved the sound. And, and I was just thinking, ah, this is so nice to play with my nails again right now, because I had learned that way on classical guitar and I had played so long that way. And I had there's certain techniques that just simply are easier that way. It doesn't mean at all that I don't like doing it without the nails either. So I just, I don't know, it kind of, it just struck me that why not do either one when I want to, right? And I very likely after this video, am going to be chopping these off. Look how big they are right now. And I've been getting a great sound with them. I'm really happy with it. Um, and I played that little clip for you at the beginning of this, this uh, episode here. But I want to now go back to doing some no nail work and recording some stuff with that and playing and playing around with it and getting creative with it. And each time it's just inspiring to do something different. And I, I have some loop pieces that I work on that are arranged for guitar. And I'm like, well, that's perfect to play without my nails. And then sure, let the nails grow back and do stuff with the nails or do stuff with the Telecaster without the nails. Let it just be phase by phase, project by project. Now, if this just sounds dumb to you, I totally understand. That's fine. It sounds dumb to me saying it in, in, in the sense that it seems obvious, right? How obvious does it seem? But I think it's a wake up call for me, right? To, to get out of this fixated zone of thinking that everything has to have a solution. And perhaps you can relate to that with anything you're doing in your, well, certainly your life in general, but your music world, right? Oh, I need these pickups or I need these strings or I need that in my, in my room or my practice space, or got to switch the tubes out. If only I had this, if only I had this, if only it was just this way, if that worked out, you know, and none of it is ever, it's all just ideas, right? It's all just concepts because in the moment, um, and the project, itself, whether that's just us practicing on a regular basis or trying to record something or trying to play in a band or whatever. Um, they all, it's all just this moving, breathing thing. And our, our level of how we respond to it is always shifting too. And that's something that constantly blows my mind, how we respond in terms of inspiration to different experiences and sounds, music you're listening to, could blow your mind one night and the next day listen to it and you feel nothing because of just our context, our day, our mood. How did we sleep? What did we eat? What were you just exposed to, right? If you had, if just circadian rhythm, it's, it's a, such a powerful thing to reflect on for me as someone that is working on making music and creating my own music that if I am not feeling it in the moment, it doesn't mean it's bad, right? 
that's kind of a, a side tangent there, um, to just say there's no right answer, right? There's simply straight up no right answer. Nails, no nails, whatever, it's all good. And I'm just like, what if it's just anything, everything, right? What if I just stop worrying about having a sound and having a solution and let it be whatever it is and embrace that for the moment? So clearly I'm talking here about just having all of this, these varieties of techniques uh, at my, literally at my fingertips. But even if I were to switch back to playing with my nails and saying, no, oh, this is just actually better, which is not what I'm saying. It's not better. Uh, it is just different. But even if I did, I, I wouldn't regret the work I did at all because it was a really great experience. I, I get excited about challenges like that. Like I went back to the basics with a technique I've never done before. And it was hard. It was really hard. And it made me understand the guitar better. It made me, it improved my technique substantially just because of that effort that I had to put into all these things, my accuracy of my fingers. Now I have also this just ability to switch between the two, but overall my technique is better. I love the sound that I got on the telly and now I know I can get that and I've always wanted to get that and I can just chop my nails off and get that when I want to. Um, and the big thing is that I have a, an appreciation for playing with nails and I have an appreciation for playing without nails, but I never thought of it as appreciating playing with my nails before because I was just told to do it. So if nothing else, challenging maybe the status quo just to, just to see is, you know, does the emperor really have clothes on, right? Like let's figure out or from a personal experience why I might want to do things this way. Um, and I'm just saying that in a very general kind of vague way, but think of it with all technique ever, uh, all music advice ever, anything I ever say on this, on my teaching, on my channel, in my courses, whatever, um, we have to really feel strong about it ourselves. And so I love this, this exploration of coming back to nails and saying, I really, really, really understand now why it benefits me to use them when I want to use them instead of just, I'm a classical guitar player. I play without my nail. I play with my nails blindly because I was told to, and because I always did it that way. And that's what you're supposed to do. And everyone's supposed to do that. And if you don't play with your nails, you're not a real classical guitar player, which is kind of what the narrative has been. So having that appreciation is, is powerful. And it makes me reflect on, um, taking everything with a grain of salt and finding our own reasons for doing even the main thing, even the mainstream stuff. Do we love it for our own, for our own journey? So that is all kind of touching on a little bit, this final point that I want to make. That's kind of my bonus item, uh, about people changing their minds and about, you know, what it feels like to change your mind, uh, publicly also like I'm doing. Uh, but before I get into that, if you want my solo guitar arrangement pack, it's totally free, bunch of arrangements, just a reminder, link in the description or go to soundguitarlessons.com slash moon to get that. There's a bunch of easy introduction, classical guitar pieces in there. There's seven of them. There's a bunch of chord melody arrangements and other stuff as well. And more difficult classical pieces too. Uh, but those, that series of easy introduction, classical guitar pieces is a YouTube series that I'm starting, starting next week, which I'll talk about at the end of the video, but, uh, I'll put lessons out on each of those, but that's in the arrangement pack available for you right now. So here's my kind of big perspective shift bonus takeaway. Um, I love changing my mind. I like the, the feeling of it. And, um, I knew this would happen on YouTube because I put a, I put a video out on YouTube every single week and it's been, um, about five years that I've been doing that. So I chopped my nails off early, early in that, um, experience in my run of, uh, putting up YouTube videos. So I knew that I was probably going to say something and be really adamant about it. I don't know if I was adamant, uh, about telling other people what they should do. I wasn't, but I was, I was, uh, excited, <laughs> I guess, but I knew that I would, something would happen where I would change my mind or my opinion would change. Uh, and then like, oh, there's a video up there permanently, or this is on the internet now. And you said it this way. And then I'm going to like contradict myself later. I knew that would happen. And it's probably happened in more subtle ways, like less, less like big announcements here, how I changed my mind. Um, and I'm totally okay with that. I remember early on in teaching, 
And, and we all have these, these realizations in life, right? Where we're like, oh, I used to think that, but now I think this. It's just that it wasn't, it's not recorded, right? It's not public and online. But like, even when I was teaching lessons, I would tell people all kinds of things that I have the opposite opinion of now. Like I actually were, was telling students to arch their wrist as much as possible and I had all these reasons for it. Like tips of the fingers you can play on. It gives you this space here, da, 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 da. Some of that stuff is real and logical, but over time, my opinion has firmly, firmly changed that the wrist should stay as straight as possible, as often as possible. And sometimes you need to arch it for certain things and you bring it back and that the lack of space here or fingertips is all worth sacrificing for the sake of the wrist staying straight uh, because it's just healthier and uh, will get less injuries that way. That's one example of something I was literally telling people to do and then later realize and later telling people to do the opposite thing. So the reason I, I'm reflecting on this is that uh, I guess it's a reminder for all of us to take things that are applicable to us. Um, and if someone says something they and and you and they seem adamant about it, it's quite possible they'll change their mind someday. Right? So we have to take everything with a grain of salt and really think for ourselves. And I was kind of saying that already, but um, yeah, some, some people are very convincing. Some people are very convincing and online we're like, oh, I got to find the answers and I got to find, oh, this person says, do it this way. I mean, isn't it frustrating online? You, you watching guitar YouTube videos, for example, because that's what I do. And that's what you likely watch. Um, that how much how much contradiction there is out there this person said do this but this person said do this right this person said um do this exercise that is this just exercisey thing this other person said never do an exercise that's not a piece of music like oh well oh shoot they both seem really confident about what they're talking about which one is right like oh no i'm gonna do it wrong there's no wrong way there's no wrong way um so here's another example i recently said on my channel, it's like at the end of a video, that I'm going to be going just more exclusively deeper into jazz on my YouTube channel. Well, just a second ago, I announced that I'm going to do this seven classical series thing. So I I had this idea, I, I need to niche down. I need to go into just focusing on jazz on my channel because those videos do well. I have an audience of people who like the jazz lessons and I like to teach it and it's and so I was like, oh, okay, I'm just going to focus on this. And I did a handful of lessons, maybe, I mean, a, a bunch in a row that were all jazz. And I've always taught jazz lessons on YouTube and the videos do do well. But I did a bunch in a row, maybe even like 10, 12 videos that were all just jazz, 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 jazz. And I like, I, I'm really proud of all those lessons. I think they're helping people. But after that little phase, I just realized I don't want to only do this, right? I don't want to only focus on this. Um, so again, changing my mind and saying on my channel, I'm going to just do this and then doing it, going into it and then realizing um, why I maybe don't want to do that. Um, I felt the pressure a little bit for the sake of like business and, and YouTube um, to be a little more focused in what I talk about. And just because that's supposedly better for a business, that's supposedly better for a channel. And honestly, I believe that it is. I believe it is better for those things because you're attracting a, a certain audience that is interested in a certain thing. But uh, after doing that, I was like, I, I just can't, I just got to do, I just want to talk about what I'm working on, what I'm inspired by, whether that goes into classical direction, whether that goes into jazz direction, whether that goes into creativity, songwriting, whatever. I just got to be me. I just got to be me. And I got to teach what I think is interesting. And I got to teach what I think is helpful. And I got to teach what I know helps people because of all the teaching that I've done in the past. And I like to answer questions that people are asking and make videos out of them and stuff like that. So just, you know, my main thing is that I just make sure I do one, do a lesson every week and don't miss it and let it be whatever it is and let it add up. Just sharing about that because um, I think it's similar, right? Changing our minds. Um, there's like a little uh, motivational quote action creates clarity, which I've latched on to and has helped me a lot. I will think about something forever in my head thinking, this is the answer. I got to go towards this. I got to, I got to do this thing. 
for example, oh, I want to focus in on jazz. I want to focus in on jazz. I, I could think that for a year without doing it and still think it's the right answer. Or I th think some, oh, I got to go towards some kind of sound in my, in my own music, or I got to, or, but by doing it as soon as possible, by just saying, I think this is what I want to do. Okay, I'm going to start it. And I'm going to announce that I'm doing it or whatever. Uh, as soon as possible, then I realize whether it was the right thing or I need to switch it or adapt it or evolve it or go back on it, whatever. So whether it's just chopping off my nails and going for that, whether it's going towards jet, I do the, I used to do these like creativity inspiration videos. Um, I guess a little bit like my talking videos now, but I thought even for a short while, a long time ago, I was like, I just want to only do these. I just want to talk about creativity and, and, have it be more broad than just guitar. I could have latched onto that in my head for so long and thought that I needed to switch the whole thing and stop the stop the YouTube channel and start something new, but I just switched right to it and did like four videos in a row like that and realized got it out of my system basically. I was like, "No, I want I want to teach guitar." I was like, "I've taught so much guitar, I have so much to share. I just want to do that." And so, um I'm just sharing about for me, you know, doing something making a choice, making a decision, um, even announcing it, and then going back on it. And it's extremely important to me that if I say I'm going to do something, I do it. And I might do it badly, or I might do it late, <laughs> but I'm going to do it. Um, and so if I say something and then go back on it, you know, I think it still has integrity if I share about it, right? But by trying, trying, trying things and um, letting it teach me whatever it teaches me by doing it. I think that is the value in taking action, figuring it out from there, whether it's a new sound, whatever. This might not feel relevant for you, but it's a, th it's a thought and a reflection that I really wanted to share because I think we are scared of committing to things. We're scared of putting things out there. We're scared of, you know, especially if it's recorded in public, because there's this feeling of what if I change my mind? You know, what if that's not right? Oh, it's going to be concrete. It has to be forever, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, so, you know, doing the no nails thing, I could easily not have done that series, which has helped a lot of people and a lot of people love it and still comment on those videos. I could not have done that series because I think, oh, what if this is not that, you know, it's, I'm just documenting my thoughts along the way and letting it change, let it change, let it change, let it change, let it change. If you want something to watch next and you're kind of and to think about this stuff right now, watch my interview with Rob McKillop. He's the, he's the person I talked about that is like a leading player without nails and just an amazing, uh, ama an amazing mind and, and an excellent musician. And it's a big interview and the theme behind it all is just be yourself, be yourself. There's not a right way. There's not a wrong way. Even though I interviewed him about playing classical guitar without nails, his number one message is who cares? Do whatever you want. Change it anytime. Doesn't matter. So that's relevant if you want to get a little more of that juice and, and watch that next. Um, I post a lesson every week on YouTube and I post a monthly kind of podcast talking episode like this. Next week on YouTube, I'm starting a series, seven easy classical guitar songs for beginners. Sheet music is in my solo guitar arrangement pack that you can get for free with the link in the description. Hope to see you in that lesson. If you're interested in playing solo guitar and classical guitar, whether you're playing with nails or without nails, it doesn't matter. It's all good as we know. Hope to see you there. Hope to see you in another lesson soon. Either way, take care and happy practicing. Mm -hmm.